Um, the decline in the stock uh, directly related to the number of streaming services that have come out and said we're going to price at this price point seemed very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, what does Netflix have to do this quarter in order to allay concerns about uh, about them possibly being boxed into the price that they have right now? Right. So um, the you know Netflix stock has really fallen on Q2 earnings, where they lost 130,000 subscribers in the U.S. Uh, they underperformed. They came in at 2.7 million total subscribers uh, in the quarter, and they were expecting 5 million. So they underperformed in Q2. Q3, they're uh, expecting to add something like 7 million subscribers, 6.2 internationally, and 800,000 in the U.S. Um, what they need to do is, is hit those numbers. Uh, in Q2, they talked about what was driving the miss, and they essentially spoke to content. So there was great content in Q1, which pulled some subs forward, and great content coming in Q3, which perhaps moved some subscribers into Q3. So they need to post good numbers coming up uh, in two days on Wednesday. And then the second thing is they need to show that they can compete with Disney, and we won't know that until uh, Q4, Q1 of, of um, uh, 2020, because Disney comes out on November 12th. They've got a very competitive price offering. They're going to be launching at $6.99 for Disney+, Plus, and they're also going to be out there with a bundle, which is Hulu, ESPN+, Plus, and um, Disney+, Plus, all for something like $13, which compares very favorably to Netflix's current price. Is there a, we always talk about the valuation, like you say, $136 billion enterprise value for yeah. a company with $3 billion of earnings or EBITDA and negative $3 billion of free cash flow. Is there, they still have the growth premium in there? Is mm -hmm. there a premium at all on takeover possibilities? Because every now and again, it's floated that this is a way for Apple to beef up its content big time if it really wanted to go that route. Right. I mean, at this point, Apple's streaming service is based around spending a billion dollars of content. So if they actually want to get serious, there's an idea, well, perhaps they'd just buy the 150 million subscribers that Netflix has. Um, so that's certainly an area where the a way to justify Netflix's stock price here whether Apple is really a buyer at 136 billion or prefers to uh, create its own content and, and try to enter as we've seen Amazon Netflix it, it's been you know it, both of those companies with large amounts of cash have been able to come into the market and build content so it shows that perhaps the barriers to entry in the modern content world aren't as high as they used to be. You have a hold rating on Disney stock, is that correct? I do have a hold rating yeah. on Disney stock. Why? Is it the valuation? Is it so much built in based well, on the optimism around the streaming service? Right. I mean, if you think about Disney, you, you, can, you can break it down into three parts, right? You've got the parks, and you can put a reasonable multiple on that. You've got the legacy media businesses, ESPN, ABC. Those have all the same secular issues that other uh, media companies have, and, you know, this traded eight times EBITDA, uh, which means if you take those out of the valuation, Investors are uh, ascribing something like $60 billion to Disney's um, over-the-top streaming services already. Before it exists. Before it had launched. <laughs> uh, and, you know, even the company says they don't think they're going to be profitable until 2024. So clearly, um, you know, whether it's Netflix stock or Disney stock, there seems to be a, a pretty full valuation around these over-the-top streaming services. Uh, and many of them have yet to generate a profit. So... I think from our perspective, there's some hesitancy about recommending a buy, given there's not a huge margin of safety on these valuations.